Raven lads, welcome back to Kossi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kossi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Now, there is a huge debate around Arsenal's left forward, who is incoming. Five names, or over five names, actually, have been discussed in this position. Rafinha, Jared Bowen, Christopher Nkunku, Raheem Sterling, Cody Gakpo, and Rachel Lisson. The huge question and what I wanted us to discuss and have a conversation about on the channel today is... Among all these five names, who is the best suit for Arsenal Football Club? Who takes us to another level? Who elevates, the, you know, who elevates us to that level that we want to be at? And who actually comes in and fits into what we already have and what we are trying to do? So your job in, on this video is going to be a very, very easy one. You're going to join me in the comment section and you're going to decide. Rafinha, Jared Bowen, Christopher Nkunku, Raheem Sterling... And Richarlison, who is the player that Arsenal should be signing? Per player, I'll be giving you their strength, weaknesses, and statistics in the past three seasons. Primarily, last campaign. Because I think all of, you know, all of them actually did very, very well. We'll be looking at the five of them. The prices and how much Arsenal would have to pay. And which one would be an easy transfer and which one would be a hard one. So if you do consider... Um, subscribing to the podcast more of this content will be coming your way and of course hit the like button because look that is what drives the traffic and that's what drives the channel uh to lots and lots of uh you know people right so let's get into it the first thing we're gonna do we'll talk about rafinha because he's um the priority priority Priority. Yeah, according to Fabrizio Romano and David Onstein, Arsenal do want to bring in someone, uh, you know, someone uh, who plays as a forward, who can double as a winger, and also, you know, generally as a forward. But in that position, they're primarily looking at Rafinha. Now, I do not have a problem with Rafinha. I think it's very, very exciting. I think the price tag around him, as compared to all the players here, is even a little bit better because it's valued at around 55 million euros which could reduce to up to 50 million euros if you talk with leads and also if you think about the brilliance of the brazilian i think you need to be excited now one of the things you have to know about rafinha this campaign uh you know the recent campaign uh is that he's been a star man for leeds united and when to come to scoring very crucial goals and actually to an extent that he kept them up in the league you, you've got to argue that he really played a huge role 11 goals uh, of course for him uh in the um, uh in the premier league last campaign that was absolutely phenomenal three assets that he you know three assets that he, man he managed for uh Leeds united uh like you can see in 35 appearances and of course the campaign before that for Leeds united 20 uh 2020 2021 30 games, 6 goals, and 9 assists. So, if you look at his numbers last campaign, you would argue that he's very, very close to what Saka managed at Arsenal. And Saka was Arsenal's best player or player of the season. So, what Rafinha brings us is, one, he brings us a player who can score many goals and crucial goals from uh you know, from, from from the wings as a right winger as a left winger depending on where you're gonna play him so it you know, gives you that ability to score many goals uh as, especially as a team that is going to have Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Jesus players that you think uh, would be leading that forward line very well with a couple of qualities but goal scoring is not one of them you do not expect them to score for you 26 goals per campaign that means you'll have your midfielders contributing as many goals as they can and then you'll also need to have uh, your wingers scoring as many goals as they can but the other beauty around rafinha is his ability to you know, take on players 1v1 and of course uh, you know isolate uh, isolate full backs isolate center backs as well it creates a lot of spaces for your striker and it also creates a lot of spaces uh, for your midfielders to run into widening the pitch his value is 55 million euros leeds united looks like they have already come to terms with the uh, with the idea that he will not be staying with them uh, next campaign and they will be selling him the only problem around this is upfront You've got to pay that money up front. And I think that is why Leeds get it wrong. I mean, someone should pay the money the way... I mean, in installments, it should be a better structure. But they want 55 million euros um, uh, in, in no installments. In no installments. It should be paid uh, up front. In my opinion, uh, um, among these five, Rafinha, Jared Bowen, Christopher Nkunku, Raheem Sterling, and Richarlison, Rafinha, 
out of five, I'm going to place him in position three. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. And getting him for that price would be an absolute steal for Arsenal Football Club. Number two, Jared Bowen. Linked with Arsenal once again um, uh, in the past week. Jared Bowen has been absolutely exciting for, uh, for, for, for West Ham United. I think I've, I've already said this and I will say it again. If it is not for Declan Rice, I would argue that Jared Bowen has been the best player for West Ham United uh, last campaign. 36 games for them, 12 goals and 10 uh, and 10 assists. That is 22 uh, goal, up, you know, uh, goal involvements in 36 appearances. That is mad. That is absolutely mad. Now, you've got to argue that in Arsenal, in the Premier League, there is no player who contributed as many goals as Jared Bowen last campaign. Is that one of the reasons why I would sign him? Definitely. I think he's one of those very, you know, very interesting, uh, uh, you know, forwards. Actually, he he really, you know, brings out the true explanation of a modern forward, one who can play for you very, very wide, you know, wide of the pitch, you know, strength the pitch, try to beat players one v one, and then also one who can come inside, cut inside, and provide that kind of, you know, little, you know, with play narrowly and give you as many goals as you would like. Ten goals. Uh, you know, 12 goals and 10 assists for uh, for Wisdom last campaign. You don't think it's going to come cheap, do you? He's going to be, uh, you know, it's, I think it's going to be around 60, 65, 70 million euros. That is what Wisdom would be asking for. I'm not really even sure they would be ready to sell. They've already said no selling Declan Rice. I don't think David Moye would be looking at selling Jerry Brown. But of course, he's one of those players that have been discussed heavily by Arsenal and also by clubs like Liverpool. It shows you the quality that he's having and, you know, why Arsenal should go for him, you know, in the first place is that clubs like Liverpool, clubs that are at that level where we want to be are looking at him. The price tag, in my opinion, would not be that, you know, that, that big problem. Arsenal can negotiate uh, a 65 million euro deal um, and that could be paid across a couple of years. So the structure of the deal would even be better than that of Rafinha. Where do I rank him? Out of five, I rank him... I'm sorry, four. Yeah, I'm going to put him for He's had a better season than Rafinha, but I think Rafinha has had a better season because he's, he's kept leads up. Leads have been struggling all season. There are some of the clubs that have been conceding lots and lots of goals. And you, you, you can see that his 12 goals last campaign, he's actually 11 goals um, uh, last campaign managed to keep them up. So, Jared Bowen in position four out of five. Let's move on to uh, in option number three, and that is Christopher Nkunku. Now, Christopher Nkunku on this list is the only player playing out of the Premier League. He's playing in Germany with Arab Leipzig. And what you have with Christopher Nkunku is you're having a player who has blown up. He's not had very, very good you know, uh, seasons in the back, but this season he has, boom, blown up. So uh, if you look at his statistics, you're going to be very, very uh, amazed in the German Bundesliga. I don't think there is a better player uh, than him in the German Bundesliga. This is it. 34 goals, uh, 34 games, 20 goals scored and 13 assists. That is 33 goal involvements in in, in 34 games that is mad we talked about jared bowen who has 20 uh, who has 20 tw 26 26 goal involvement but this guy has 33 in 34 games christopher kunku is an absolute beast he's been absolutely uh, very very phenomenal for leipzig they want 100 million for him and you understand why they want to keep him right so of course he led them to that final was it the final? Was it, it, to the semi-finals uh, of the UEFA Europa League, they were unlucky that they did not win it. But in my opinion, Christopher Nkunku, if any team signed him, they would be bringing in absolute gold. Now, the question with Christopher Nkunku is, can he replicate these numbers um, after having two very, very poor seasons, 32 games in 2019, five goals and 2020, six, uh, six goals in 28 appearances, and then he's just blown up. So can he can he replicate those numbers? And is he is he worth one hundred million euros? However much I like him, in my opinion, I do not think he is worth a hundred million 
euros and i'm gonna place him in number two uh on that you know uh, uh, you know in pecking order i'll put him in number two i think it's very very you know exciting uh to watch he, he literally plays narrowly as a, as a as a striker you could call him a striker because he plays very very close to uh to andre silva and th i think that's one of the reasons why he's even scoring as many goals as he can of course, the uh, um, you know the formation uh, Leipzig are you know use are using is also favoring him, but there is no there is nothing we can take away from Christopher Nkunku. This campaign he is up you know he's been absolutely very phenomenal. So if he brought him at Arsenal, one he would be a starter, but the price would I think that deal no. In terms of uh, access, in terms of how easy the deal is, that is where it goes away. But I think his second. On that list uh, of left mid uh, left wingers and left forwards that Arsenal are trying to look for. Let's move on to one complicated one, Raheem Sterling. Now, why Raheem Sterling is a difficult one and a complicated one? Number one, uh, Manchester City will be listening to offers for Raheem Sterling this campaign. I didn't expect that, but they will be listening to offers for him uh, this campaign. So. The likelihood that he will leave Manchester City is very high. The club that is interested in uh, in him very, very highly uh, at the moment is Chelsea. With Sky Sports also reporting that Chelsea now growing very, very confidently that uh, you know growing in confidence that they will sign the young. Oh no, not young. He's 28, 29. They England striker forward professional, wherever you want, whatever you want to call him, Raheem Sterling. One of the things you have you, you have Raheem Sterling um, is the fact that he's been very consistent for Manchester City, and he's one of those players that really improved uh, their games the moment they met Guardiola. If you look at his statistics over the years, you cannot believe it. You really will not believe it. He's been averaging uh, double figures in terms of scoring goals and also assisting. You know, per campaign, last campaign, only 30 games for uh, Manchester City. Not all of them are stats, by the way. Scoring 13, 2020, 2021, scoring 10 goals in 31 appearances. But in 2019, that is when he scored 20 goals in 33 appearances. 29, uh, 2018, 2019, 17 goals in 34. And of course, 2017, 2018, 18 goals in 33 appearances so you have a player who is absolutely guaranteed to give you success but also in rhyme styling there are more there is i think in my opinion there is more to get in rhyme styling because of his age and experience one you're getting a player who's played for two uh, for two of the best giants uh in um in the league right now played for liverpool and also played for um, and also played for Manchester City, played for one of the best managers in the world. He's won almost everything apart from the UEFA Champions League. And also, he's not won anything internationally because they've not won it. I mean, they've not won anything internationally, so you don't blame him for that, do you? I would rank him number one in that list. He is, for me, he is the perfect forward Arsenal looking for. Someone to counter Saka on the other side. If Saka is... Uh, uh, he's playing on the right-hand side, and he's young, he's only 20, uh, he's, you know, he's not yet proven, and those such things. You need someone who can just counter him. You, you need someone who can give you uh, something very different, someone who's a little bit more re reliable, and someone who you, is not going to count on their mistakes to learn more and more. That's why I think Raheem Sterling, for me, would be the better signing of all the names that we've mentioned. And lastly, let's talk about Richarlison. So, Richardson uh, is also confirmed that he will be leaving this summer, according to uh, a couple of reports. Spurs, Arsenal, and a couple of and Chelsea are interested in him. Three clubs in London really want his services. What you get with uh, with Richardson is one of those you know he is one of those players that give you the striker vibes, yet he doesn't play uh, centrally. So you can use him as a striker, as a support striker, while you have. Um, Gabriel Jesus, while you have an Edin Ketia, or while you have a, um, uh, while you have a Dominic Cavalier, just like Everton have been using him. One thing I like about Richarlison, before we get to the numbers, he is very decisive 
and direct. That is uh, that is the nature of his game. And, and many people think Kwasi is not even Brazilian. Is he Brazilian? Doesn't have the skill set. The reason as to why you know you think like that, it is it, it comes from his directness and his ability to impact the game by being more direct rather than being more colorful so he's a brazilian that i think is not very very colorful but if you look at his numbers here it you know it, it really shows you why his game is like that last campaign 30 games 10 go, uh, 10 goals for him uh 34 games in the in the campaign before that seven and he scored 13 goals uh in 2019 and 2018 uh combined you know not combined but in each of the seasons 13 goals in 2018 and then another 13 goals in 2019 so it shows you that you're looking for a player uh, I think who can stretch again the pitch and also uh, you know just play narrowly as a striker and that's I think Everton this season they should be grateful to God that they've had him and the fact that uh, for me the fact that uh, you know, he's going to go for at least less than 60 million euros is one of the, those players that I would really consider getting at Arsenal Football Club but I'll, I'll position him in five I would position him at the bottom of this uh, of this list because I think if you if I compared him to Christopher Nkunku, anyone would take Nkunku over him. If I compared, compared him to Ra Rafinha, anyone would take Rafinha. And if I compared him to Raheem Sterling, I think Sterling has been a little bit better than him. But make no mistake, Richarlison is a great player. Let me know in the comments below who should Arsenal sign of all these wins. Who should Arsenal go for and why? Hit the like button for me, subscribe to the podcast, and I'll see you in the next one.